Hey everyone. Um, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Um, so this video is going to be on relationships, not just like special, like significant other relationships, but just relationships in general with people around you after your diagnosis with Ehlers-Danlos. Um, so I know personally it came as kind of a shock um, to everybody around me. Um, it was kind of like we went to the geneticist, but we weren't really thinking that we were going to get any kind of diagnosis. And then getting a diagnosis that's actually significant and actually going to like affect me the rest of my life was a big deal. And it wasn't something that we were expecting at all. And so it totally blindsided us. And yeah. Um, and so I asked my little brother what his first impression was or first thought was after I was diagnosed with EDS. And he's like, how do I spell that? Or how do I say that? Or what the heck is that? Like, because just saying like, I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It doesn't really make any sense to anybody, even you. Um, and so I think that's one of the big things. Make sure everybody in your life is educated about EDS and knows what's going on because that'll make your coping with it a lot easier if they can cope with it. Um, I know a lot of people have very well-meaning people in their lives, but I just want to put out to those people, um, make sure you don't burn out of energy before, like, keep yourself healthy and then focus on your EDS loved one because you can't do anything to help them if you're sick yourself. Um, I think that's really, like, the biggest thing, like, Yes, it's great to help. Like, I love help. Help is a wonderful thing. I need a lot of it. Um, but you can't help people if you can't help yourself, you know? So I just wanted to put that one out there. And then I also wanted to say, even if you think you did something wrong, like, overreacted or underreacted or anything, move on from it, you know? You're either going to continue the relationship or you're not, and you're just going to have to move on. Um, personally, as long as you were well-meaning, I really wouldn't care that you messed up a couple of times. Now, if you're dropping me on my head, yes, that would be a problem. But as long as it doesn't get to that, it should be a-okay. Um, but, and then the next thing I wanted to talk about was an open web of communication because that's, like, in trust exercises and stuff, you have to communicate to get things done. And so I just think, like, overall, that's the most important thing. Keep the ways of communication open between you and the people that you want to keep them open with and I guess don't keep them open with other people if you want to be a little bit more private and that's okay um you don't have to blast to the world to everyone that you have EDS it's okay to hide that now I don't know how healthy that will be personally I'm one of those people that's really out there but it's okay. You have to do what you feel comfortable with. And if that's hiding it, then that's okay. If that's blasting it to the world like me, then that's okay too. Um, you really have to just read into yourself. So communication, trust, and keep yourself healthy before keeping your EDS person healthy. I also think, person, from personal experience, you have to 
if people aren't believing you in the fact that you say what you're hurting or whatever, and if people aren't believing you, they're not the right people to be around. Pick the people that you want to be around and be around them and don't keep your enemies closer than your friends. I know like the old saying, like keep your friends close and your enemies closer, but don't. It, it won't help you. You need to surround yourself with people that will help you and people that care for you and people that believe you because otherwise you're just going to feel more and more sorry for yourself and more and more crappy. I think that's all I have for today. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day. I am pretty excited for this week. Um, happy Martin Luther King Day, everyone. As president of Diversity Club, I feel like that should be my thing. Um, yeah. Bye.